Hey everybody, welcome to a new episode of A Planetary Discussion. I'm your host, Eric Moran, and today we have this new guest. He is hitting the Orville fan community like wildfire. He is a musician, rapper, producer. This gentleman here does it all. He has this new track that just came out that's hitting all the, the, the entire fan community, and people are talking about it. They can't stop talking about it. Living on the Orville, ladies and gentlemen, I give you the multi-talented Sean Mike. What's going on, Sean? How you doing today, brother? What's going on, Eric? Life is good, man. Pleasure to be on here. <laughs> well, first off, let me say this. I want to thank you for coming on to the show. Uh, I, I just love what you've been doing. Um, thank you. I, I caught you on social media when I saw you on Twitter, and people were talking about you in the fan community. Tom Constantino uh, from the Orville praised your work. Um, you have people like Orville Nation, Maria with the T. Everybody's been talking about you. And I was like, I got to get him on. My, I got to get him on. This. I got to get him on. I got to interview him. I, I just got to interview him. So we're going to just cut right to the chase. I want to get right into your backstory. Tell us a little about yourself to the audience. Yeah. So I've always been a musician. Music, music, music has always really kind of been my thing. Honestly, I feel like it's a, it's a gift from God or the universe or whatever one believes in. Um, I was born to be a musician. So I started off playing, uh, you know, that little recorder instrument that everybody played in like second grade. Everybody hates. I love that thing. I played that thing for hours, then eventually evolved to the clarinet and eventually evolved to the saxophone. And I was really good at it. Toot my own horn. No pun intended. Um, <laughs> and um, I've always listened to hip hop, too, like throughout okay. the journey. So I've always listened to artists like Nas, Eminem, uh, Tribe Called Quest, you name it. And I've always wanted to try rap. And like I used to always rap like low key, like because I didn't want people to know. I was I was shy when it came to rapping because just like I'm using my voice, at least mm -hmm. in an instrument, you know, you're, it's not your own voice. There's something about your own voice. So I used to like low key rap. And then eventually I got to the point where I was comfortable to show a few friends. So I showed a few friends, you know, some tracks that are recorded on a basic microphone, a basic USB microphone using some basic software like Audacity. And they say, yo, Sean, this is really good. And I'm like, thank you. And they're like, no, Sean, I'm serious. This is really good. You need to keep doing this. You may have a future in this. And I kind of fed off that energy, okay. you know. Um, so I started showing my music to more people. I started feeling comfortable, you know, showing my music around to different people. And I met this one cat, one of my best friends today, um, his name is Nova T27. And um, he said, yo, uh, I record at this studio. Um, we should go there and um, make a song. Crackalack uh, Recording Studio is the name of the, it's my audio engineer. He actually engineered this song, Living on the Orville. So we went there and we recorded the song. And um, it was my first professional song. And eventually I got, I was really nervous. I'm not going to lie. Going to a professional studio, like seeing all these like, computers and microphones and i was kind of overwhelmed but the shot the song wound up turning up uh pretty good and um i started getting more comfortable so i started scheduling more studio time more studio time um and i i started to learn that i really enjoyed the feeling that came with rapping it's like a feeling of freedom it helps me just kind of escape kind of like what the orville does to me honestly from a tv show standpoint kind of helped me escape uh, any stress because we're all stressed out as people yeah. we really are and our passions and my belief are what we do to escape that stress and the more passion you find and the success you find with that passion the better off you are going to be to avoid that stress so i found out that rapping was that escape from stress for me because when i'm rapping whether if it's in the studio on stage I feel just like all my worries are gone. I feel like a different person. It's kind of, Sean Mike is kind of like my alter ego in a way. So that's kind of how I got started. I was just going to finish off by saying that is, uh, you know, I, I started off, I showed some people, people introduced me to people within the industry, and I started getting more comfortable along the way. I love the fact that you were playing instruments before. What kind of instruments were you playing? Yes. Like, mm -hmm. So I started off with uh, the clarinet. Okay. 
And then um, I switched to the saxophone. My my main instrument was the clarinet, though. I, I was yeah. really good at clarinet. Okay. Yeah, because I, I played the piano a little bit uh, growing up. My, my parents, like, yeah. for us to, you know, for me and my, my siblings, we were like, oh, yeah, you got to play. I mean, of course, we had more music. Uh, we have more music classes back then than they do now. Like you know, unfortunately, you're yeah. right. You know, yeah. so but but man, I'm gonna tell you, I had so much fun. Um, Jay Lee, piano's fun. Yeah, Jay Lee plays the piano like a madman. He's doing now like yeah, big, like you know, show events and stuff. Special. Yeah, events. I saw that actually. He posted the video recently on his Instagram, right, of him playing the piano. That was yeah. cool. Yeah, I would love. Now that's something that we need to let Jay Lee know. You know, you need to do a collaboration with him. I oh yeah, you know, I'd know, definitely I, be down the work with Jay Lee. Jay Lee. I can totally see Jay Lee like, <laughs> oh yeah, we gotta get this cat on. Oh, <laughs> no, no. I, like I said again, I, I think that's amazing. What was it that inspired you? Not only as a fan of the Orville, but what inspired you to say, you know what? I want to write a song, or I want to write a track, or I want to do something based around Orville with my musical talent. What inspired you to do that? Yeah. So Orville Nation on Twitter hit me up, PJ, and um. He said, uh, because I got my music was getting around on Twitter and a lot of Orvillians found it. And uh, they said, yo, your music's really good. And then uh, Maria, um, who's also part of the whole Orvillian group, said, you should make a song about the Orville and we'll interview you. And I said, you know what? And season three was going at the time. So I was already on an Orville high. And (laughs) I was like, you know what? That's actually a pretty good idea because really the song deserves it. The song is more about the show than me. You know, I'm just the kind of the person who made it. But it's really for the song is for the fans. It's for the show. Uh, It's a show because it's a show that's popular, but it's not popular enough that it should be. It's very underrated. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, So that's what really inspired me, uh, you know, to start writing that song. And I I had just got done watching the episode. I forget what episode number. I think it's episode nine. But it's the episode where Charlie Burke sacrificed herself to save everybody. And you're that's what Domino. You're, you're talking about Domino. Yeah, Domino, Domino. Yeah. yeah, that episode. So when I watched that episode, um, I started writing that night after. After I watched yeah. that episode, it was the debut of that episode. And that's why I start off the song with the verse. I'd sacrifice my life like I'm instant Burt to spit a verse. <laughs> which I love, which I love. It 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 really it really resonates. Um, I think it resonated with the fans, you know because of the fact that it's another expression of fandom mm-hmm. like you know like i do with my my films but with you it's through your music and i love the idea and the concept of you doing that and it's really it really shows it really shows in presentation is everything so yeah I, like i said you knocked out the ballpark because you. technically you're the first person that has done an actual track that's dedicated to the orville um do you do you see yourself possibly doing more like writing more tracks that are dedicated to the Orville, like like that, like or other episodes that inspired you to say, you know what, I want to I want to break out and do some lyrics about, yeah. you know, these characters or what have you. You know, um, I may it it depends when it comes to my song ideas. It really mm-hmm. depends on what jumps out at me, and that idea was brought out to me. But if I, because living on the Orville, it's a concept about me as an individual as an artist as if i actually lived on the orville that's what the song's about uh so if a concept does pop into my head maybe you know when season four comes out and i'm watching those new episodes and wink, or wink. even even if, even if you don't do it in rap form you do it like via like playing the saxophone and all i mean you could be that first person that, that hits all different boundaries within the music realm yeah but it affects you the orville affecting you in ways where you're being expressive through the music, through rap, through yeah. playing jazz, I mean playing uh, the sax, it's it's yeah. it's a form of expression. Even doing poetry, like again, that's to very me, true. it's just it's just it's a, and like I, I think that's how it affected us as fans. Yeah, like you know, for me, the, the what the episode for me was about a girl. That was like one of my it's about a girl. The two topas. There's all the in between episodes, but those are the ones that always stand out with me. About a girl and the tale of two topas. Because again, it just affects me in, in a lot of ways, and so I try to gear a, great episodes. a lot of my ep- like a lot of the way the writing is, and I sit down with the writers. We try to make sure that we bring a human factor to to what we tell in our stories, but mm-hmm. at the same token, to being able to sh- have fun at the same time. So, and you show that within the track, 
Mm-hmm. I, I love the fact I'm sitting there just like, I'm like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. So before we go any further, let's let's listen to a little bit of the track. We're yeah, going to give you guys a little bit of a sneak preview of what's to come. So let's listen to it. In three, two, one. I feel like I'm living on the fly with me, come fly with me, come fly with me, come fly. And as I'm living, I just zoom, 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 zoom up out of here. Hey, follow me and zoom, 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 zoom up out of here. Hey, 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 hey. I, I, I'd sacrifice my life like I'm missing birth to spare the verse. Never hurts the vision, living a light, different dimension. Seek vengeance like Kelly Grace. And boy, I ain't playing, and it's over now. Call me Captain Mercer. This beat is creel, and it's going down. Wow, man. That was really, like I said again, I'm I'm so feeling it and, and everything else. I might have to, I'm gonna have to add that to my workout uh, routine. Cause I have this like like this, like I have my my music on my on my uh um iPod thing and Basically, when I work out, I have music that inspires me and all. And I have yep. the Orville, I have the Orville theme. I got my track theme from my show. And then I'm like, okay, I gotta, I gotta have your track on my, <laughs> my workout routine. Cause I have all this music that really inspires me when I'm in the gym and stuff like that. So yeah, that's going that's that's going to be on my playlist. That's cool, man. As a person who loves working out myself to music and has a soundtrack of my own, that's yeah. I, I appreciate that, man. Yeah. So now for people that that want to go like i already know like you know you're on youtube and everything where people want to go to download it and show support to you what would they have to do yeah so it's on all streaming platforms so it's on like your spotify's it's on apple music it's on itunes it's on amazon music and if you don't feel like spending money for it that's perfectly fine you can go on youtube and listen to it for free now what other besides that? What other music that you are looking to do? Because I've seen that you you're on the road a little bit. You're performing at different places. Like, where are some of the places that are you going to be performing later in this year? So, um, I don't have like a really an established schedule for shows yet. Mm-hmm. Not quite yet. A lot of the shows that I've been doing, the ones that you're talking about, I believe, were just in the the local area that I live in in uh, Michigan here. Okay. So, um. I don't have any shows scheduled for the future, but if um, I will keep people updated, if I do, for sure. I just got this feeling that there's eventually someone's going to do an Orville, like uh, Orville, like con or something like that. Yeah, I got a that feeling would be that cool. you're gonna, Yeah, I got a feeling you're going to be you're going to be definitely tapped to be a guest, like a <laughs> guest performer. I'd, do not be surprised. Yo, for the, any cons out there, you know, hit me up. I, I'd definitely be down for that. That's actually crossed my mind. I've never so, been to a con before. I've always wanted to go to one too. So, so what would what would advice would you give to people that want to like do what you're doing, or even just in music or art alone? Like, what kind of advice would you give out there to young people or people that want to do anything like you are doing right now? From a music standpoint, if if anybody wants to get into music, number one is um, I would first find off what you like doing. You know. Um, because there's so many realms in the music industry. You, you could rap, you could try an instrument. Uh, and my thing is, you have to fail. You have to fail, 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 fail. And I mean that in every aspect, not even just music and life. Um, you have to keep trying. You're going to get negative criticism. I get negative criticism all the time. Um, you have to, when it comes to negative criticism, everybody handles it differently. I like to write my criticism down and read them that motivates me uh so you have to you know you have to find a way to deal with the negative criticism from a professional standpoint and keep going forward um you have to put your stuff out there you cannot be afraid to put your stuff out there i know it is terrifying i know it's a scary world out there the internet is a scary place but you have to put your stuff out there you cannot be afraid you have to be very confident and you have to have fun too that's the most important thing is Agreed. you have to have fun. It's, it's like I said before, this is supposed to be your escape from the stressful world that we live in. So if you're not having fun, then it's not for you. That's well said. Well said. So as a fan of the Orville, for both of us as a fan, I remember you talked about this a while back in prior interviews, but I'm and, and I love when you, when you ask this question, but I'm going to ask you this question now. If you If you had your way, Name your three. We we talked about one of them already. Name your three top best episodes that you like. It doesn't okay. matter which season, but what are some of the, like your favorite 
Orville episodes. Okay, so yeah, so one of my uh, my we're gonna start off with episode six, season three. I forget the title of the episode, but a tale of two stories or something. I think it's called where Malloy goes back it, to 2015. Oh, you're talking about you said episode six. Yeah, twice season, in a lifetime. Twice in a lifetime. Twice yeah, in a lifetime. I got that mixed up with a tale of two topas. Yeah, twice in a lifetime. That one. That episode, I've watched the most out of any Orville episode out of the three seasons just because I thought it was so well written. A lot of my favorite characters were in that episode, and a lot of them developed in that episode. And it was just a fun ride throughout the whole thing and the composition, the music. I love the music in the Orville, by the way. But that episode particularly, I love that. So that's number one for me. Okay. Uh, Number two, the one where... Lamar goes to uh, that planet where they Majority have to roll. Uh, yeah, that Majority planet. Rule. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Maria, Maria was showing off her thing. I had got mines also. They sent uh Tom Constantino sent me a prop from the Majority. Yeah, yeah, that's well, yeah, so that, cool that, was that they sent you guys that. <laughs> yeah, they, 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 matter of fact, they, I don't know if you guys you can see this, but they sent me this. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, I can see I it. Survived, I, I survived it. Uh, I survived three years <laughs> waiting for the Orville to return and stuff. But no, I, I, I like that episode, not only because it was featuring Jay Lee, they were highlighting Jay Lee, uh-huh. um, but it was it was it was dealing with today's issues or what yeah as, as, a, as a society in social media and everything else. So yeah, I I, I totally agree with you on that. Yeah. One. That yeah, no, it, it and that's the cool thing about the Oroville is it does a good job of taking what we're dealing with now and putting it into the future. Yeah. And dealing with the same issues that we deal with as a society now, but in the future. That's one of the reasons why I love that show. And that episode in particular, I thought it was creative. Uh, it kind of gave me Black Mirror vibes. I don't know if you're a fan of that show, <laughs> but it, it was cool. And Jay okay. Lee is a good actor and he did his thing. I, and I, I like episodes that were uh, focused around uh, John Lamar just because he's such a cool character. Yeah. Uh, one of my one of my all favorites was season two, Identity. Uh, part one and two. Yep, that, that was going to be my third. Yeah, that gives me next generation vibes. Yep. I've talked about this in prior interviews. It is the to me, it is the best of both worlds for the Orville. Yeah, the, the best of both worlds when Picard turns into a Borg and all that stuff. This is our equivalent to that, and we got it in the second season, and we didn't have to wait for an entire seat, like uh, an entire hiatus, to to wait to see what it was going to happen next. By far, because you did a lot of, it, it was just so many layers to that episode, to that two parter, man. I was, just mm-hmm. like, and then and the fine, you know, the fact that Isaac turned on everyone, and it was so unexpected. Oh yeah, yeah, and then you know, and then you figure it expanded from there, not only through, um, the doctor's relationship with him and the kids, but then you had Charlie. She's like the the the, the aftermath of. She's a reflection of some of the aftermath. Mm-hmm. It's almost reminds me of Captain Cisco how he felt about Picard. Yeah, like, you know when D Space Nine uh, came out, which is one of my like favorite Star Trek series. So it just hit on so many levels. Yeah, you know? I mean the Orville overall, like the the series itself, it's just it, it this has so many it has so many embers of next generation, but it's doing its own thing, which again where we are talking about it as fans, we're like, dude, yeah, remember this one. So it, to me, it's just one of those things that really set in with me, like without a question. Your top three favorite characters of the Orville. Oh, that's that's an easy one. I, I got to okay. go with Charlie Burke, okay, Bordas, and then third Lamar. Okay, you, so you and I are two and two for that. Um, L- uh, Lamar and Bordas, of course, Gordon, because I'm, I'm gonna Gordon say this. A good okay, one. This. this this is why I'm saying Gordon. Gordon really grew on me as a character because mm-hmm. it was one of those things that I just kind of like, okay, he's the voice of reason. He's what everyone else is thinking. Like he when he says stuff, I'm like, yeah, I'm thinking that same way. In season three, where um twice in a lifetime, where Gordon, you know, is in that dilemma with the, you know, with the egg sandwich. And I talk about this. The thing is I felt about that, you know, because they basically placed them in a situation. What would you do? What would I do? Like if I knew that there's a good chance I'm never, no one's ever going to come back to get me. Do I kill myself? Do I, 
do I, what do I do? Like, yeah. you know, you, you know, you can't have a relationship. And like, when he broke it down, he's like, look, I was living by myself and I was going to, and I met this person and I haven't ended up being with the girl that I talked about in season two mm-hmm. and I end up being with her and, for 10 years. You know, yeah. For 10 years. And you got a family. I'm like, yeah, you know, that's, that's, I love that kind of writing because it gives a, it's a conversational piece at the same token what you know it gives you that idea of what would you do so i'm glad that you know i'm glad that you gave some input because i wanted your insight on some of your favorite episodes uh characters and all that and i love the idea of discussing that because i don't often get a chance to do that and it's a lot of fun when you're talking with other fans and all and we talk a deep discussion so i would like to know sean what do you else you have coming down the pipe what else do you have coming up that people can tune into anything new yeah, so absolutely. This year, uh, I'm going to be releasing a lot of singles okay. uh, just every quarter. So okay. two, three, four months go by. I'm going to release a single, uh, release a single, and I'm going to do videos with those singles as well. Okay. I got a lyric video that's going to be coming out in a couple of weeks for Living on the Orville. I, I recently started a Twitch channel. Okay. Um, so I am going to be on there. It's called the Instagram for that is SM517Gaming. That's okay. where a lot of my inst- stands for Sean Mike 517 Gaming. Okay. So that's where a lot of my, it's a video game dedicated channel. So okay. I post a lot of video game content on there. Okay. Um, and uh, I love watching films. I love watching films. I love watching films. I, I get inspired by other people's art, which okay. kind of connects with the Orville song. Uh, so I, it's kind of like you asked before, will you make another Orville song? I, I don't know. I may go through another Orville high. I'm, I mean, I'm on one right now. Um, <laughs> you know, watch an episode and I might write another Orville song too, as well. And one of the type like, of person okay. that really likes to focus on one thing. Right. Um, so when the Orville idea was brought to my mind, that was my main thing that I was focused on. I had other side things I was working on too, right. you know, but it was all about the Orville for me, uh, for like the this song took me, I started recording it in like June, finally finished it in December because I'm really picky. Okay. Listen to it over 2000 times and go into the studio over again. But, but I, I, that's, I mean, just kind of going back to your point about you got so much stuff, it can kind of get overwhelming. And yeah, I think for creators, it's really important that you find your one main thing that you work on your one main thing that you want to get out to the world. Uh, because in my opinion, quality is more important than quantity. I want to thank you, Sean, for coming on. Um, Sean, where can people follow you at across your uh, social media platforms? Where can people follow you at? Yeah, so on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all of them, it's all it's Sean Mike 517, no spaces. And so you made it that simple. You made it that easy. So, yeah, that's marketing then, 101, man. Make it easy for the people. Agreed, agreed 100%. <laughs> And for people that want to, I know you mentioned it earlier, but one more time, people that want to find Living on Orville, where can they go? So they can find Living on the Orville on all streaming platforms, including Spotify, Apple Music. And again, don't got to pay money for it. You can listen to the song for free on YouTube. All right. All right. If you like what you see, help spread the word. Hit your like, hit subscribe, tell your friends and family about it, spread the word out to the Orville community. Make sure you show your love, show your love and support to this man here, Sean Mike. Again, Sean, thank you for coming out. Thank you to everyone out there who's showing their love and support across all my Orville fandom platforms. Show your love and respect to Orville Nation, Maria, Talking to Orville, Alyssa, anything and everything that's dealing with the Orville fan community, please show your love and support. And we have more episodes coming out later in the year. And as I always say, make every step you take a planetary one. We'll see you soon. Feel like I'm living on the fly with me. Come fly with me. Come fly with me. Come fly like I'm living on the fly with me. Come fly with me. Come fly with me. Come fly. And as I'm living, I just zoom, 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 zoom up.